Hello, welcome back to Be What Review. I recently watched a YouTube video by saxophonist Chad LB. In this video, which is called The Seven Sax Solos Every Saxophone Player Should Know, Chad shows snips from solos by Dexter Gunn, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane and others, and speaks briefly about them. After watching this video, I thought to myself, why not make a similar video, but concentrating on simple solos that a beginner to jazz could play? So here is my version of seven great beginner jazz solos for the novice sax player to play and learn from. I'll play each recording for you and go through the transcription and try to show you what I believe the player is thinking as he plays. We start off with alto saxophonist Jesse Davis we're recording from the 1996 film Kansas City. Davis is playing in the authentic 1930s Kansas City style on the tune Moton Swing, which was composed by Benny Moton at that time. The tune is in AABA form and 32 bars in length and Davis solos one chorus. Let's listen then to Jesse Davis on Moton Swing. Okay, so the first thing you should be doing is looking at the musical form. See out what kind of form the music is. Is it a 12-bar blues? Is it a 32-bar song? Is it some kind of special thing like Giant Steps, you know, which is John Coltrane tune, which has got a different form? So in this instance, you count the form from when the tune is actually going around and repeating itself. And the actual length of the tune, that is the melody that is being played, is 32 bars in length. So a chorus, that is a chorus what the soloist is going to play, is 32 bars in length. So if you hear the word chorus, it just means they're, going to, they're playing the tune, as uh, the chords of the tune, or the bars of the tune, from the beginning of the tune to the end, which is repeating. And here the repeat is 32 bars. Can you see? From that bar there, where the tune's starting, that F6 chord, to that bar there, down there. Not that bar... That bar is 32 bars. Now, Jesse Davis is actually just playing over that bar, so, they've, so we write an extra bar, and then we finish it off there. But this extra bar is just saying he's going over, but the chorus actually finishes there, so he's playing basically one chorus. And you can see here that he's actually playing two beats before he actually comes in. So this is a lead-up, but the actual chorus starts here. The next thing is to work out what kind, of, what kind of form the tune is actually written in. And this one's written in A, A, B, A, molten swing, right? And you, you divide that up into sections, right? The section, the section on this F6 where it starts here is called A1. Other people, some people might call it different things, but I always call it A1. This part here where it repeats is called A2. So this part here is A2. And this one here, right, where it's changing, we're actually moving. Can you see there's this little uh, chord sequence, which, which is actually turning the music into A6. Sometimes they call that a turnaround, although a turnaround usually goes back to the beginning. But I would call that a turnaround because it's taking you into that A6 chord. Those two chords there, B, E. See, those two chords, B minor 7 and E7, are being A. B minor, second, it, B minor 7 is the second chord of A6. And E7 is the fifth chord of A6, so they're taking you into A A6. So I'll just write that in. So we're going into B here, and we're going in by a two five one in A. Two five one in A. Then after this eight bars, we're going back to A section again. So this here from here is A3. Now you get different things being called here. If this A section goes on a little bit more, right, say, say there's an extra four bars added, 
right? A little which which doesn't actually fit fit into thirty two, but like goes to thirty six. You would call this section a a three prime, something like that, which is saying it's not quite the same sec, uh, length as these. Some people do. Some people just would just call it a three, but I would call that a three if, if it was longer, right? Which this isn't. It's, it's actually fitting eight bars exactly the same as up there. I would just call it A3, but if it was longer, if there was a little section put on, I would call it A3 prime. Okay, so that's your forms. Right, the next thing to do, uh, I think, with a tune like this, is to uh, just think about what the style is. Uh, to me, the style is playing in, even though it's a, a 32 bar song based on popular form like Tim Pan Alley tunes, right? It's, it's following that same same form. Uh, Two A sections, a B section. Sometimes you go A B A B. Sometimes you go A B C, uh, A A B C. Things like that. The the forms actually change, but in this particular one, is playing very bluesy. So even though it's a thirty-two bar popular song type type track, right? When you when you listen to him playing and where the the music is actually playing, it's very much in the blue, the Kansas City blues style of the nineteen thirties, right? Uh, and uh, one thing that I think is important when you're looking at music like this is to see how the musician is actually playing the phrases, that, that is the beats. And if you look, virtually every note on here doesn't start on the beat, the first beat of the bar, or certainly not on the beginning of a four bar section. That is, if you look there, can you see, let me just write that in, that particular note there, that A. Right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a little arrow there. Right, see that A there? Insertly. it. That A is on the first beat of the bar. Now, f playing on the first beat of the bar all the time is bad, I think, in jazz. If you're playing on first beat on bar, then you repeat it there somewhere. First beat on bar, first beat. It just kills swing, which this music is. It's swing. It's swinging really nicely. So you don't want to be doing that. Now he only does it twice. He does it there and he does it there. Can you see on that E? Let me just write that in. He only does it twice, right? And the 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 thing is, if you look at it, he's playing it on the second beat of a four bar section, right? Now, if you're going to play a beat on a note on beat on beat one like that, try not to do it there. See where I'm putting error or there. See, he's not playing it there. There's that lead in there, and you see that is carrying on from this. You're not playing on beat one. It's same there. Look, see that runs to there. This is the place you really don't want to do it. There, there, there. There, 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 there. You don't want to be doing it on the first section of the four bar because it really does sound like the music static. Now he's doing it on bar on the second beat of a four bar section in both sections. There you see, so it's not sounding as bad. Not only that is he doesn't repeat it until we get down here. So it's it's very variable and it doesn't sound bad at all because it's the pace is slow. So you don't you're not getting that repetitive thing that's happening that killing killing the swing. So I would definitely say keep away from playing on bar one unless it's like this. You're playing on bar uh, a second bar of a four bar section if it's like this and going in eight bar sections or in a blues same thing in a blues. Uh, and it doesn't sound nowhere near as bad. And don't keep repeating it. See he's not repeating it there, right? You keep repeating one a note on bar one like that, you just kill swing. It just sounds like some other kind of music other than jazz. Right, so that's that bit. Let me just uh, you can remember these A B C, can't you? So I'm just going to uh, erase all that. Right, the next thing you should look at is at the actual music how it's played. I think now if you look at those notes, all those notes there. Basically, this to me looks like. It's all written in D blues. I'll just put the scale underneath so you can see it. This is all written in D blues, right? Which is, remember that a blues scale is kind of like a minor scale. It's a flat five, flat seven. So kind of like D blues would be D, D7. We've got a chord here, F6. Now D blues is very similar to F pentatonic, which you might play on here. It's very similar to F pentatonic, except that it has this G sharp, right? 
This is a six note blues scale. There's all different types of blues scale, but this is like the basic one, six note blues scale. And that's what he's using here. This is Canon blues scale that you would use in 1930s. Right, so he's playing this G sharp. So it's all, everything's basically, right, in F, in F, uh, well, F pentatonic, but just with that G sharp adder. So we're playing D blues. And we're keeping away from the fourth, which would be a, a B flat, until we get here on this G minor. You see he's playing B flats on that G minor. Now he's not playing, he's not really playing B flats anywhere else, if you look, except on that little bit there to emphasize that change. So this is all being played in D blues. And if you look, he's, he's playing very much as they would have played in the 30s by hitting chord notes. So you've got F there, you've got a D, which is from D blues, and then you've got a C, which is obviously 7th in D blues, and 5th uh, of F6, and then dropping down to the root F, which would be the third in D blues. So it's it's all basically it's all playing D blues, but matching these chords. When we get here, he's playing a B natural, which is not in F, right? Uh, and he's playing it as a lead into this B flat, so it's like kind of like dropping down. So I would say that here we're getting voice leading, which I'll talk about in a bit. So then he goes to B flat and then B natural again and B flat. So this is definitely like moving. It's kind of, let me show you, it's kind of like moving like that down and then down again, right? Notice how he's playing this with the notes off the beat. He didn't play that there, right? Because that wouldn't, would have been putting that straight on beat one. He's just playing it off beat and then bringing notes off beat again. So he's kind of like, even though it's playing very slow and steady, it has a nice swing to it. Uh, and then again we're playing A, so the music, if you look at the music, it's dropping slightly. So we're going to A, and then we're going to this F, and then A again, and then this is dropping down to C. So it looks to me like we've get, we're getting some kind of voice lead in here. This is something else you should be looking at, voice leading lines. So I think the voice leading is starting off hitting that F, and then from this D, we're getting kind of like a voice leading line that is going like this. I'll just circle them. We're getting that D, going to that C, going to this B, and B flat. So we're dropping down and then to A. So everything's going down, and then that's going to that A there, can you see? And then this is dropping down, not brilliantly dropping down, because it'd be better if there were a G there to show that it is dropping. And we're going to this C here. Now this is interesting, because what he's doing now is, he's emphasizing an F there, can you see that F there? And he drops that F down there, that's what I'm seeing. Now these lines here are playing up to that C. So the vo a voice leading line is still going on these C's up here, can you see? And these are just, this is playing up to it, up to it. But at the same time we've got this line here, this F, I'll just put it in a different colour in a minute. So we're carrying on here, and you can see we've still got these C's here. So this is the voice leading line, and then a, again, a repeat of this, this line here, and then down to F, and then a repeat again. So it's basically, we're always, we're playing a lot around C, until we get here, and then we're hitting that F. And then, it goes down through this, this is a G minor, this here, can you see this here, I'll just write it in. That there is a G minor arpeggio in third inversion from the F. See, G, B, D. See, just there, G, B, D, F. You see, G, B, D, F. So G minor arpeggio, and then it's dropping to that C. So the voice leading is still on this C here. So we're getting a top line that's playing C. But if you actually listen to the music, what you're hearing is these Fs. I'm just going to change colour so I'll show you. What you're hearing is these Fs. It's playing into these Fs here. Can you see these F here? And then that F there. And then that F there. And these Fs here. All these three Fs here. And then up to that F. So a lot of it is playing between the C and the F. 
Now the F, F and C is a fifth into it, which is a nice interval, nice easy interval to play. But at the same time, if you look here, he's playing A to C, which is a minor third, which gives a good blues effect. And then we've got this uh, G sharp, which is the which is coming from the D blues scale. So we're getting a lot of blues here, this G going into A, C, and then down to F. So it's basically going C, F, C, F, C, F. You know what I mean? It's all going to C, F, not C to F. And we've got this G minor. Just sp It's actually quite clever that how he's gone from that to that F there. So that bottom line here, this bottom F, goes there. And these two notes here are obviously flats, B flats. So they're going with this G minor. So again, it, like he did up here, where he's emphasizing the changes, he's actually emphasizing the change to this G minor chord. So we're actually playing through the chords. Uh, and then, like I say, he's playing the actual arpeggio and then going to C again, which is G, A, B, C, which is a fourth on that G minor. You could play a fourth on a G minor, but not really on a, on a major chord. Uh, it's because you get a half step interval. You see, if you played a C on a major chord, say if that was G, G, B, D, F, a G major chord, what would that C would be a half step above the B, the third, and that would cause dissonance. Because that's G, that's a B flat, you see, that C doesn't cause that minor nine dis dissonance. It's a, it's a ninth dissonance. Dis it's a ninth interval, which isn't as bad, right? I hope you get that. <laughs> if you don't, you have to watch my uh, harmony course on YouTube. Uh, so now we're into th this G minor, and we drop in, and he's actually again he's playing. Let me think. Yeah, he's he's emphasising this A sharp, which is a B flat here. So again, we're playing B flat there and B natural. So that's just a little. That's actually a little. Uh, this this here is actually called. Uh, a changing tone let me show you this this here this here is called a changing tone it goes to there and then moves up it's surrounding that note can you see you've got half a step below and half a step but above so you've got a sharp below or b flat below going to b and c going to b right now that's that's called a changing tone i've actually i've actually put a video on about this or i usually call it m5 because it comes from a catalogue of Charlie Parker Motors called M5. But what we're doing is we're surrounding that note, and quite a few people on YouTube have talked about this. We're surrounding that note there. And then that B is dropping down to there, so the, the voice lean is going from that C to that B to that B flat. So just a minute. So the voice lean is going from this B to that B flat. You see it's carrying on from that... It's carrying on from that C there to B to B flat. And now, if you look, we've got another changing tone there, look. And that's taking us to that A. And then another changing tone here, which is taking to that A. It's just repeating its own real life. That's repeated. And then it drop, drops down to this F, which is that top line. Again, we're playing uh, plenty of Fs, but this time it's playing F third C so mean A to to F which is A to F which is a third not a fifth up there is playing F to C you can you see F C F C F C F C F all that is a fifth but now we're playing thirds so it's it's the the music's actually closing in on itself if you know what I mean this is actually kind of carrying on this so it's Kind of like, let me see, 8, 9, 10, 12. So basically, these first 16 bars are actually carrying on, and we're not changing until we get here at this, uh, this 2, 5 in A, B minor, E7, turn turn round, in, which is taking you to A. Uh, so I'll just, uh, yeah, this, so that's that's basically that F there is kind of from that F up there. And now we are going into the... Uh, B section here, this is the B section, these eight bars, which is a change to the key of A. So now we've got two chords that are leading it in. This is a two, what's called a two five one, right, in A. So I'll just, I'll just kind of like write that. I'll write it down underneath uh, when I've finished this video what it means, two five one. It means a two chord going to the five chord, then going to the one chord. And then he plays directly. He's not emphasising this A6 straight away. He plays A, which is the root, but it's coming in. It's not too bad, that, you see, because he's coming in 
with these two notes here, this E and F sharp, which is taking you to that A. So let's have a look. E. Right, these two notes is taking you into, if you look, that, that E, right, is moving to F sharp, then that F sharp is moving by minor third to that A. So again, it's kind of creating a blues effect. Minor, minor third intervals create blues effects. So it's playing that F sharp to A and bending, and then and then he hits this C. Remember, that's another minor third from A to C, right? So we're still, we're still playing like bluesy intervals, if you know what I mean. Now he's not he's not telling you we're in A six, right? We're still playing basically notes that were originated from this up here, from the F F key. And now it bends the note into A six. So we're actually emphasizing A six here if you look. This is A six. And then from this A six, right, this is a C sharp, which is definitely in this is actually definitely saying, well, wow, we're in we're in A. And then he plays this line here, this little uh, it's a pedal, uh, E F. This it's a scale run down to A, and then he's using what's called a converging figure, which is taking you to A. A converging figure basically is, is a note that surrounds a note. An enclosure is something that's very close; it encloses it. And a converging figure is something that's far away. That's how I always remember it. Anyway, uh, this this little line here going down A. F E we're we're actually just in E we're actually just playing down in a scale an A scale, right? And then this A here is taking us to that C sharp. So basically we're playing in C sharps. It's keeping the C sharp going. So we're definitely saying we're in A now because them C sharps were nowhere near up there. If you look, you'll never see an A sharp up there. So so what's happening is because we now moved into this new section. Uh, Jesse Davis is saying, oh, we've moved into this new section. What I'm going to do is play a note that you haven't heard before, C sharp, this C sharp, which belongs to A6, right? You haven't heard that before, so this is telling you that we're now in the new section. So this is something that you really need to be doing, right? If you're playing a 32-bar tune and it's actually moving into another key, which this is. I know with key signatures the same all the way down, but you've got to look out for things like this. This whole section here is basically written in A until you get to those two bars there, and that's a turnaround that's taking you back to F6 there. So these are all telling you, these notes, C sharps, he's actually telling you that we're, that we're in the key of A, and he keeps on doing it. Can you see? C sharp, C sharp, we're actually in key of A, we're in the bridge section. Now here, he's just hitting the A's. You see, these are all A's. That's an A, that's an A, that's an A. I'm telling you we're in A. <laughs> lots and lots of A's, get another A there, see? And what he's doing is, is he's jumping around the A's. Can you see, I'll just do it in a different color so you can see. Right, if you look, he's playing da da ba there, see? He's bouncing around the A, but there he's using the C sharps, and again here, look, C sharps to that A, and now he's changing to A itself. See, A there, and now he's using this E to A. Can you see? He's using that E going to A. See there, and then here, look again, E to A. You see, it repeats. Very simple, but very effective. And we've got that other A up there, you see, there's plenty of A's. And now we're changing here. Can you see this bit here? This is G, F sharp. This is basically a, a G bebop scale. G, uh, G, I'd say that with F sharp. G, F sharp, F, uh, down to that D. And then hitting that B flat there, which is actually t telling you. So we're going from A, this is like, it's taking like a voice leading line here. That A is going to B. That's just running down to it through that B bot scale and that. And then that A is going, that B is going to that A. So it's still, it's still kind of A. There's lots of A's. Can you see? It's actually creating a motive, this. He's playing, he's playing around these A, he's basically playing around these A's, but he's using C sharps around A's, and then he's using E's around A's. But if you listen how the music's going, it's actually playing around these A's. He's just he's just emphasizing A's, that's all it is. It's really simple, but really effective, I think. <laughs> Uh, 
and then let's have a look what he's doing here and then c f again we have a very simple notes we've backed at root here but he's played that a wasn't a root it's f a it's a third and then third fifth root so basically that's an arpeggio it's how he plays it see that's just an, that's just an f6 arpeggio we are at the six uh, and then we're playing this here see this note here we're playing a uh, an A flat, which is a minor third on that F6. Right? That's a minor third. And that's giving it a bluesy effect. Then we drop it down to the F yet again. <laughs> he's playing now he's playing around F look. Uh, and then we drop into then we go into A here. So we've gone from that A flat. Uh, and then he's playing in D blues again. That A flat, we could call it a G sharp, so we're playing in we could you could say that we're actually playing in D blues. In fact, he is. That's all he's doing is playing in D blues. So that A flat, which is from D blues, right, is now a flat third on there, but it's coming in as though he's playing. So he's not actually playing that G minor. If you look, that G minor is out. He's just playing F here. A bit looks on it, and then playing that bluesy note up to A, and then these notes. Can you see that's going up to that A? And then these are all going up to A. Can you see like that? Them, a, them G sharps are all going up to A. And then we're hitting C. This C here. Can you see it's all moving then to that C? We've got a little bit of a voice leading line here. That's going to that B. He's playing a major for this. So I think F. F. Yeah, this is. If you look, we're 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 actually playing in F here. We're not playing in G minor. This is all F carrying on, and that doesn't exist either. We're playing in F. He's treating it as F, and this is what's called a sharp eleven. Because if he plays the eleven, oh, this is a sharp eleven. This note, uh, it's kind of like a raised fourth. The fourth would be a B flat, and he's raising it to B natural. And the reason why he's playing it to B natural is if you play. If you're treating it like this as he is, as F, and you play a B flat, then you're going to get clashes, you see. He's he's playing all this as F, so he's playing that, which is sharp 11, which will sound better. And then dropping down to G, I don't know where that G's coming, but that's a G natural for change. And then we're playing B flat. I'm not quite sure that G, it just probably just sounds good. G, B... Because that's a major third, isn't it? It's a major third down. And then he might be playing G. He might be playing this G minor there. That might be carrying on from F. Right? And then he decided just on that one note just to play G minor. So this could be G minor or C7. Can you see he's playing Gs and B flat? So it could either be that chord or that. See, this here could be G. Uh, he's playing B flats here and Gs. So this could be G, uh, this chord here could be G C7 or G minor, it fit either way. And then we're back into F here, just here, you see, we've got that bluesy effect again, moving up. Uh, he's playing, a, he's pl basically, this here, can I just show you, this here is basically repeat of this up here. Can you see this here, it goes G, A, C. It's basically the same thing, GAC. Now, you, you might miss that, but it's basically the same thing. It's GAC, but instead of playing it in triplets like he was there, he's playing it in, in uh, eighth notes or quavers. Uh, and again, GA, but he do not go up to C this time. He's going down to C. So that way, just there, just there is going up to C, see? And then just here... He's going, he's taking a longer pattern and going down to C. So you got to watch out for that. Then we're playing the root F here. <laughs> root F. And then that F is going to that F. That's kind of like the voice lean. So let's have a look. So the voice lean with that. Not brilliant voice lean like Charlie Parker would be, but it's all right. Can't see him going from G's, A's. Gee. You could, you could look at this as a second line. Let me just do it a different colour. B 
Because this is actually emphasising that G, it's going down and hitting that G, you could see this as a secondary line. See all these G's, because it's playing lots of G's. But then we're going G sharp, and then that could go to F. Those G's there, that could go to that F. Do you know what I mean? So we've got like two lines. This line's finishing, and then we're still on this, this F, which leads to there. So it's, it, it, is, it, it, it does keep you going. What's this here? There's a converging figure hitting that A. Oops, and then that's going to A flat. So I see it anyway. Okay, so I hope you, you've got some of to see in that. I just want to say so, something about this. So basically, there's two scales that Jesse Davis is using on this. Just here, all this, right, from there to there and there right right to the end of his solo he's using d he's using a how do, where can i write it up here he's using a d blue scale i'll put it i'll put it up top the, the scale he's using right and just here from there to there he's just using a pentatonic if you look at all those if you look at all those notes there they're all in a pentatonic, aren't they? So that's it. Uh, I don't think I can tell you anything else about that. Like, like I said, just reminding you again, try to keep away from playing on beat one. And if you are going to play on beat one, play it like this. Not at the beginning of a four-bar section, but there in the, you know, after. So he's playing it the second. If this is a four-bar section, that's a four-bar section. He's actually playing it on the second bar. It does sound better. If you look at all, um, as we go through this series, as you look at other saxophone players, some of them are actually, I'm going to show you some saxophone players who I consider to be great players, you know, people like Lou Donaldson. Uh, you'll see that they do the same. They don't play f on the first beat of a bar because it's just considered it just considered to, to stop swing unless you're just doing it very, very uh, conservatively, not very often, okay? So uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I can tell you about that one. So have fun playing that. There's a lot of big bands actually uh, play this tune, Molten Swing. So if you're a kid and you're playing a big band, uh, learn this solo and see if you can play it in your big band. Okay. So I'll see you in the next one, which will be looking at uh, another sax player, another nice uh, alto sax player. Okay. Bye. <laughs>